Okay, welcome to this video. This deals with section 8.4 from your text, which is problem solving using Venn diagrams. We're going to look at solving word problems using two and three uh, set Venn diagrams. So we're going to start with some examples involving two sets. And if you read in the book, this is, starts on page 345, and they go through some examples. Well, actually, they go through one example. They have one example here. And then they have a set of problems in 8G, all concerning one problem. So uh, I think that's not very, a lot of, very much material, so we're going to push ahead into the next set of problems, and I'm going to do an example there. Here's an example in the book, example 9, very good example. Read it very carefully. It explains step by step exactly what I'm going to do in my example. So you'll have that example to go by, and I'm going to do this one, number 1. Okay, let me zoom it in a bit here. We have 25 students in class, 17 study French, 12 study Malay, 10 study both languages. And as the book says at the beginning, it, it might immediately seem like a contradiction if you add these up. 17 and 12 is 29, and 10 more makes 39, but there's only 25 students in class. How can that be? Well, the idea is that some of the ones that study French may be studying Malay as well. In fact, I know that 10 of them study both languages. And so that tells me how I can have all these numbers still fit within the 25, okay? In fact, I might have some students that don't study any languages at all. All these are the kind of questions that can be answered then by creating a Venn diagram. So I'm going to create a Venn diagram, a two-set Venn diagram for this because I have one set for French and one set for Malay. And then I'm going to come back here and see how I can answer these questions. Now, I won't be able to show this problem again because I'll have my Venn diagram up. So we're going to see these questions are going to be asked. And uh, this is the problem from 8H, number one. And it's on, let's see, page, what page is it on? It's on page 347, okay? So we're going to come back to that 347 page if you want to follow along with the examples, all right? But I'm going to go and look at a Venn diagram for this, okay? Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. Let's make this smaller. And then I can fit my Venn diagram on the same page as that problem, okay? Let's put it in right over here, okay. Well, actually, I think it'll be easier just to get rid of it entirely. Let's look at a two-set Venn diagram here, nice and big, and then we'll have every thing that we can tell about it. Now, I've got, I made this one up in general, and you can draw them on very easily on your paper, but basically what I'm gonna say is one of these is going to be our French speakers, and the other will be our Malay speakers. So this will be French, French, and this will be Malay speakers, okay? The ones who speak this language. Now from the, the uh, statement of the problem that I'm given, it says that there are 10 speakers of both languages. That turns out to be the first number to put on the Venn diagram. That's the only one I know where to put. See, I have these other regions, but the number that they give me is not uh, the number of any one of those regions, okay? In other words, in the book, they have told me the numbers that speak French, for example, okay? They said there are 17 that study French. Well, that's two regions. I can't put a 17 here or here or anywhere else. I, I don't know how it's split up, but now if I put the 10 there, 10 of the 17 speakers of French also speak Malay. Well, then that means uh, that's 10 of the 17. There must be seven left out here that speak French but don't speak Malay. So now I have 17 inside the French circle, and I have 10 of them that are also inside the B circle. Now I want to complete the Malay circle. Well, how many speakers of Malay do I have? I have 12. I know where 10 of them are. There are two more out here. Okay, great. Now you might think, that's it. I've got it all done. But there's one piece of information they gave us that I haven't used yet. They said there are 25 students in the class. Now, if you look at it, I've got 7, 17, 18, 19 students accounted for. There are six more students that aren't in either one of these circles. So I also need to put a 6 out there to represent the students that don't speak either language. Okay? I want to make sure I can see all of that. Let's turn it a little bit, make it a little bit more centered. Okay, so now I have 25 students and they're split up between these four regions. Now I can start to answer my questions. The first question is, how many speakers of French are there? 
Okay, well, the number of speakers of French is 17. They actually told me that, didn't they? They said that there are 17 speakers of French. But part A said, how many speak French only? All right. How many speak French only? Well, that's not 17, because there's 10 of them that speak Malay. But I could answer that by saying, OK, if I use my Venn diagram, there are seven speakers of French that do not speak Malay. So that's the seven only. OK, let's tip that up a little bit so we can see the top of that. All right. So the answer to A is seven. What about B? How many speak Malay or French? Okay, that's what it asks in part B. How many study Malay or French or both? So that's the union. In fact, let me write out what we've got here. The first one, I wanted the number that were in set A, all right, but not in set B. That's the cardinal number of the part in A that's not in B. All right, in part B, they ask me for the speakers of either language or both, right? Because it says uh, French or Malay or both. So that's the union. I want to know how many are in the union of A or B, okay? A or B or both. So that's 19. All right, what about C? In C, they ask, how many study neither subject? Well, I answered that when I filled out the Venn diagram. How many are in neither subject? Well, that means how many are in A union B complement? How many are in the complement? Maybe I should put my cardinal number indicator out here. How many are in the complement? Well, I already figured that out. That's six. Six don't study any language, OK? And then the next one is, how many do not study both? How many do not study both languages, OK? So that's a little more tricky. What I want for this is the number that are not in the intersection. How many do not? These guys study both. The rest of them don't. So in fact, I could just take the 10 away from the 25 without the Venn diagram, and I know that there's 15 speakers of either one or the other, but not both. OK, so these are exactly the answers you'll find in the back. And that's the explanation of where they come from, OK? That's a two-set Venn diagram. Now, the three sets is a little bit more complicated. In fact, let me stop this video here, and then we'll do this three-set Venn diagram separately.